Hello, welcome to this episode. My name is Dan, aka Lucent. Uh, I am your host for Criminally Underrated, the podcast where we dissect and talk about the most underrated songs from your favorite artists. Here to talk Lana Del Rey, I have friend of the podcast, Fernstone. Yay! Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me again. Um, I'm very happy that we're finally going to be talking Lana. I've been, we've been waiting. We were just chatting um, just before we started recording that we uh, filmed our first episode of the podcast together back in November. So and it, so it's been nine months. We could have had a baby um, <laughs> in the time since we. <laughs> don't know why I said that. Um, so, I love that you said that. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> On that first episode, we were talking about Lana and Lana was actually a possibility for the first episode. And then we went for Gaga. But this time we're finally going to get to actually do a bit of Lana and actually cover Lana. Um, for anyone who hasn't checked out the podcast before, welcome. Um, this is Criminally Underrated. The whole premise is that I have a new guest every week. They bring three underrated songs from their favourite artists and we dig in. We really like dissect the song and try and figure out which one of the songs is criminally underrated and belongs on the top tier playlist. If you want to watch the video version, the extended video version is over on Patreon. Um, and if you want to get involved, then you can either respond to the polls on Spotify or you can head over to my Instagram at lucent underscore music where you can let us know your thoughts on the podcast and get involved with everything. I think that's enough crap chat. I'm getting quicker at talking about all this stuff now. I'm like, boom, 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 boom. Um, <laughs> Smooth. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Fern. Hello. <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourself to anyone who hasn't come across you before? Yeah, I'm Fern. My channel is called Fernstone. And over on YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube. Not terrestrial. <laughs> yeah. Fernstone on YouTube and in real life. And I make reactions a bit like Lucent does. However, He's smarter than me, but <laughs> shut up. No, that's not true. <laughs> it is, and I love it though. <laughs> I watch your reactions if I want some more insight. I'm like, ooh, oh, babe, thank you. <laughs> yeah. We both have YouTube channels. We both do reaction videos where we listen to albums and give our thoughts like on the spot. Yeah, so we've both listened to a lot of music and we've both oh, listened yeah. to a lot of Lana Del Rey. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. So Fern, how did you actually come across Lana? Okay, so obviously Lana was popping off in like 2011, 10. Mm. And I remember being like, what is this crap? It's so bloody boring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling ah, the truth. Oh my God. <laughs> and everyone Great. was like, oh, you remind me of her. You remind When you sing, you remind me of her. And I used to be like so annoyed because I used to be like, this born to die <laughs> song just ain't it. I'm 15, a massive Lady Gaga fan. Mm. I'm, I'm into edgier music as well. Yeah. Like, you rock, I'm, you? I'm, I'm David Bowie, art, artsy, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, no, not this. So years go by, summertime, well, sometimes sadness became a big song. Yeah. And it was, again, I was like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and that remix was everywhere. Like, I remember, like, yes. I was at uni at the time, and you, like, every single time you went out, the remix of Summertime Sadness it was on. It absolutely was. Yeah. And I remember just not liking it. And then got into like my uh, third year of uni or second year, I can't mm. remember. A few people were talking about her and I was like, Ugh, okay. So I went home and I was doing some uni work and I thought, I'm going to put a playlist on from Lana Del Rey and just do some work to it because I know it's mellow. Mm -hmm. So I did that. I wasn't even really paying attention. And then suddenly the song West Coast came on. Oh, right. And yeah. I was like... Is that oh. from uh, Ultraviolence? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's kind of a vibe. I like that song, yeah. Yeah, and then I heard Blue Jeans. Oh, and I yeah. was like, okay, you know, this is... This is a vibe. And then yeah. I immediately felt like I had to go sing it. Like, so I wanted to learn the song right away, start mm -hmm. singing it. Mm -hmm. And then it just unlocked this absolute fucking obsession. <laughs> there I you was go. like, actually obsessed. I started listening to her lyrics, her like voice, and like, I'm noticing that my. I do have similar inflections in my voice. Mm. That's actually really a compliment, isn't it? That's really a compliment. Yeah, 
Yes, yeah. yes. And actually helped me develop my vocal mm. skills as well. And yeah. I just fell in love. And listening to her songwriting, I related to her. Yeah. And I still do. I just yeah. related so much to her. And I couldn't believe I was ever a hater. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, how horrible I've been. And now I'm like obsessed. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the thing about Lana. I feel like a lot of people might have had that similar kind of reaction initially. I think I probably did have the same reaction as well. Cause it's just, cause it is that kind of thing where like on, if you listen to it like through a speaker or someone plays mm-hmm. you a song or whatever, you will like your immediate kind of reaction might be that it is like, re- it's really slow. It's really quiet. Yeah. It's like very moody, but it's like, once you actually like put your headphones on and go into that world and actually really start listening, it's like totally magical. It's yeah. like, she ha- it's just like a trip that nobody, like nobody, no other artists. Absolutely. You know. And I just become, I was 21 and mm. I just become like single yeah. from like a horrible relationship. Right. Yeah. So I felt like I also could relate more to some of the experiences of her words. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, totally. you know, born to die suddenly became like a whole, oh yeah, I get that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And when you're like, and when you're 21 and you're kind of feeling those feelings like you need mm. songs that are that kind of dramatic because yeah. they because it feels like you need to kind of like go through that super 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 level of drama to actually totally. like, yeah, like that so this is the only thing I can relate to <laughs> yeah. that age, yeah. you know? my discovery of her was like really only recently because I, I was the same like I, I never thought she was an artist for me but then when I started the YouTube and I was like oh I should probably do this because I know that Lana's really popular and I should probably cover her music on the channel and maybe I'll learn something um, and I did chemtrails and I thought this is like so interesting and then yeah through the YouTube reacted to every single album in order nice. and the and like the the more I like started to go get into the lyrics and started to really listen the more I was just like completely lost in the world. So then when I got to NFR, I was like full on primed. So this is for listeners. This is what NFR is what her sixth album. I love that album. Oh my God. It is her sixth album. Yeah. And it just absolutely blew me away. Oh God, miss you on my lips. It's me, a little Venice bitch. You can watch my reaction on YouTube and I sob through half of it because I'm I've just seen like it. completely... Oh, I've yeah, seen I was going to say, you've probably seen it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but if listeners haven't seen my, line, yes. my NFR reaction, I think like that's probably one of my one of my most like honest, right down the middle, complete devastation moments <laughs> listening to an album. I loved it so much. Yeah. What brings us kind of up to date then is her latest album, which was... Did you know that there's a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard? Which again, I absolutely adored. Whereas like Chemtrails and Blue Bannisters, I wasn't as crazy about. Like for me, it's like my top two at NFR and Did You Know There's a Tunnel? So like... Oh, I love that. Yeah. And I, there's something about the storytelling. A&W just blows me away every single time I listen to it. I just can't One get of my enough favorite Lana of songs that song. This is the experience of being an American whore. And it's so amazing that like she's done this like a decade into her career and she's yeah. come up with this like like she's coming up with music that is just so exciting. I've got goosebumps even. I know, just, just talking, talking about, about it. it. I know, me too. <laughs> it's so good. Just remembering just like uh how and how it changes and shifts throughout our songs. Yeah. Oh, it's so fucking cool. Oh, those um, lyrics. But yeah, I guess we've kind of covered a bit of a history of Lana. Mm. Yeah. So obviously she popped off with the Summertime Sadness remix. Oh no, tell a lie, video games. That was the yes. first moment, wasn't it? So video games came out. I remember that being a big thing when I was at school. It's you, it's you, it's all for you. Everything I do, I tell you all the time. I remember all the bloody dance classes when I was in sixth form were all doing dance, like interpretive dances to video games. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. <laughs> it was like the era. I was going to say, it's not going to be street dance, surely. <laughs> And then it kind of just went from there. But the thing was that actually since then, she hasn't really had commercial success, you know? No. I mean, obviously her albums do like do well, you know, and I'm sure she sells a lot of albums and she's got billions of streams. But that's the thing is that she's never charted again. And yet she is one of the most successful artists in the world. It's amazing, really. It's very unique. And I feel like she represents this like new way of being a pop star yes but i think in a way that kind of lends her to kind of this underrated chat because like 
a lot of people are really, 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 really into her, but then a lot of people will have no idea who she is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I think she's like the perfect artist to talk about in this format on the the podcast. Right, okay, I think that's enough Lana bits and bobs. (laughs) We could go on. We could go on, and we (laughs) will, don't worry. There will be tangents, I'm sure. Should we start the podcast? Yes! Should we just talk about (laughs) our first song? Can you please introduce your first underrated Okay, so the first song I have chosen is Burning Desire. And this is actually a bonus track on the Paradise edition of Born to Die. Yeah, yeah. And it comes right at the end as well. Right at the end. Yeah. And also, I would say it's not as popular just because it does have a slightly different feel to the other songs. Mm -hmm. But she does well at doing different vibes and keeping the same... Mood. Yeah, that's it. Um, But this one... I don't know, it just does feel a little isolated from everything and maybe that is why I like it so much. Yeah. Should we have a little listen? Yes. I mean, Burning Desire, like, this is, like, such a moody song. Like, I think that's the thing that really hit me immediately is that she just, like, creates this, like, dirty, sexy... It's so sexy. I think that, okay, that is literally, like, why I love it. It's so sexy. She keeps her voice relatively low at, like, Mm. all times. Yeah. It's, like, purring. It's, like, "Mm, hello. Yes. Yes, it absolutely is. And you also feel like you are in a car traveling as it's like dun, 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 dun. Mm. you know it's traveling forward and you can imagine her just being all like sexy as the guy's driving yeah and she's yeah. almost like, like a hair perfect him blowing out the back yeah. but she's got no oh. strays <laughs> you know like yes. all of that yeah. <laughs> no strays <laughs> and like just the whole just you know she there's a lyric in it sorry i might be jumping too far right. but like there's a lyric where she says Name across my lips over and over again like it's your, your only prayer. Oof. Oof. And I'm like, oh! Chills. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Same. So good. Your name is on my lips over and over again like my only prayer. Yeah, like it's visceral, isn't it? Like really yeah. just like, like she's just so good at creating that mood. And like, I think the driving thing, that's the thing that really got me was like, when that bass comes in and it's like, mm-hmm. it's kind of shifting. And it kind of does create that kind of like, almost like the 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 the, mo- the engine of the car turning Absolutely. over, you know? That's kind of what it is, right? Yeah. Um, but it's such a surprising sound because like up until that point, it's quite ambient. And we're used to Lana songs being very ambient. That's really much her, her thing. Um, so when that like, that dry kind of like, that bass is just like so, it's such a surprising sound. I just, I found it so invigorating, you know? Yeah, and that's what I meant by it's quite different to the rest of like that yeah. album and her songs in general, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She does have travelling feelings in general, but they're normally in like a a rushed, almost like emotional way. Where yeah. this one's just like a kind of, you no, know, we're just travelling. And I can almost see, you know, there's like under tunnels when they've got all the lights in their tunnels and they go Oh, you mean ages. like an under tunnel under o- Ocean Boulevard, do you mean? Yeah, 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 that one. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> but you know, yes, the ones know exactly with like the orange mean. light sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like whipping pie. Yes. Just so sensual and sexy. Sensual and, and sexy cool. and cool. And she's totally, she's very powerful in this song. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like she, like, because I, I feel like that's what you were getting at with the, um, how you were saying some songs kind of feel a bit more like, you know, we're traveling, but we're like, this one, she's traveling, but she's in control of the car. Yes. And yes. So, so it has that sense of traveling, but it also has a sense of like, I know what I'm doing and I'm yes. going to take you for an exhilarating ride. Yes. <laughs> exhilarating <laughs> ride. Very exhilarating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ride me, Lana. Um, sorry. <laughs> why do I say this shit? I need, to, I, love I, it. I need to think about what I say before I say it. Actually, thinking about it, the first song on the Paradise Edition is Ride. Oh my God, of course. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God.
that really does link thematically, doesn't it? That's she was truly thinking about that, wasn't she? You know? Yeah, that freedom. And this is like sexual freedom. Oh, yeah, totally. Ooh, girl. It's, it's such an interesting song, though, because there are little moments that kind of have like a sense of like, there's almost like a parallel kind of narrative, hidden narrative going on. I know she does love doing that. And she loves like double entendres in terms of phrase yes. that could mean multiple things. Because um, there's a few lyrics I picked out. There was words. There's, um, I'm feeling scared and you know it, which I was like quite surprised to hear. And then cruising up and down Hollywood and Vine and you asked me where I've been. I don't want to be nowhere but here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, but like part of me was thinking like, is she almost playing the part of a sex worker in this mm. song? There's almost like this sexual you know, fantasy within this song, but also the sexual control in this song. Yeah. Like she's obviously very experienced and knows what she's doing. But then talking about cruising up and down Hollywood and Vine, that could, like taken out of context, yeah. that could really be taken quite literally. Absolutely. And a lot of the a lot of the things that she's telling this person, like I've got a burning desire for you, but come on boy, tell me all this kind of stuff. It's almost like rehearsed stuff that yeah, like a sex worker would true. say to, get, to like kind of control the sexual situation and to really get them into that mood, you know, like I was really getting that vibe. Oh, absolutely. And now mm. you've said that, I feel it like that even more as well. She is a sad girl, you know, in general, and she needs a bit of acceleration in yeah. her life. And she's like, I'm scared and you know it, but this is good. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what I usually do, but it's turning me on. Yeah. You know? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. The kind of sexual fantasy is yeah. like such a big part of it for her because it's almost like she's like, yeah, like you're saying, like she's doing something that is exhilarating and different and scary and that yeah. is turning her on. It's almost like living the fan- living the sexual yeah. fantasy. Yeah. And yeah, I almost, I feel like she's almost like um, creating a fantasy for the other person as well in the way that she's talking about herself. Oh yeah. And actually like, you're so right with the sex work stuff too, because like, Every Saturday night, I get dressed up to ride for yes. you, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we all know, what, like, ride for you, baby, isn't just about riding in a car. Like, exactly. You know I mean? uh, right. Yeah. It, it, there's so many sides. Like, mm. it could also be that she's just meeting up with the bad boy. This is the thing that has always really inspired me about Lana is that, like, she tells you a certain amount but leaves so much to the imagination that every listener can kind of fill in their own story. I remember when I when I reacted to NFR, I, like, pieced together this, like, love story that was, like, going on throughout the song, throughout the album. I missed, like, half of the kind of Americana, State of America type stuff. And all the comments were like, oh, my God, I didn't, like, I hadn't even thought about reading it in that way, but I'm so, ter- like, they're, like, I'm crying with you discovering this yeah. song like in a different way you know it's like when you did the um born to die reaction yeah um i was like oh my god because you strung every song into a story like you the whole thing you made it as a story mm. and such a beautiful i think i even wrote a comment at the time saying yeah. it but like it, you do that so well i actually am like unbelievably impressed with your like creativity and imagination as well Stop. no really when i was listening, when i was watching the david bowie video last night i was like Wow, you just you got it. You got it. Thanks, babe. <laughs> you got it, kid. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, kid. That's what it sounds um, like I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was something I was talking about with David Bowie as well. Was this idea that like he is quite sparse with his lyrics and only fills in certain details yes. and lets the audience, lets their imagination run wild. Absolutely. Like I feel like there's a bit of a, especially with um like some of the kind of indie girls at the moment, there's like an obsession with specificity, which is really great in its own way. But like, I feel like you then almost like aren't allowing the listener to fill in the gaps because you're filling in every single gap. Well, with Lana lyrics, I feel like I'm still learning more. I could hear a song a hundred times and depending on what I've been through, I will feel it different or hear it different. Yeah, totally. That really is her like, you know, her calling card is is this ability to kind of like give you enough that you kind of can start, you know, piecing things together, but then to be like, hmm, I'm leaving you with that. I'm not going to explain anything. Yeah, you do your yeah. own thing, you know. But musically in mm. that song, mm-hmm. I absolutely also love the piano. Oh, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. It really has this sort of like, it, it does add the sadness, mm-hmm. I'd say, but also yeah. like this, it's almost like mystery as well yeah um, 
and it's delicate whereas the rest of her like her voice is low and like sexy and like yeah. everything else feels quite low but that piano is the delicate it's really delicate yeah it's so high isn't it like it's yes. right at the top of the range of the, of the piano kind of has yeah. that kind of light plinky plonky dreamy kind of sound but yeah. like but like the actual harmony itself is quite chromatic, isn't it? Gives it that kind of like mm, yeah. suspense. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Uh, it's like an horror movie chord. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like used within this context. Adds the danger to it. Yeah, adds the danger, adds the mystery. Yeah. It's it's almost like this kind of feminine thing as well. It's like mm-hmm. that combination between like the kind of powerful, delicate mysterious it has so much character within itself that really is part of the character of the song part of what she's singing about in the lyrics part of the way that she uses her voice in it as well it all kind of comes together and yeah it's moody like mm, yeah sensual (laughs) absolutely it's just yeah her ability to create a world within a song is just like so amazing was there anything else you wanted to say about this one i love it because i personally always love like a kind of moody sexy song in general Yeah. yeah and this one really hits the spot yeah Cool. Really beautiful. Are you enjoying what you're hearing? Do you want more? Yes? Well then, you should head over to Patreon. Over there, you can watch the extended video version of the podcast so you can see our faces as we follow every weird tangent that we go on. You also get access to new episodes a week ahead of streaming. Wow. There's already a lovely community of music lovers over there. So come join the Crying Club on Patreon today. Links are in the show notes of this episode or on my Instagram. Anyway, let's get back to the episode. Okay, so shall we move on to the next one? Mm -hmm. Ferb, would you like to introduce your second underrated song, please? Okay, so the second song is When the World Was At war before we just kept <laughs> dancing i always i think about us earlier and making it really confusing <laughs> and then i got confused the titles are getting longer and longer and longer yeah. um, so when the world was at war before we just kept dancing i think that's right was that war oh there's no before it's just when the world was at war we kept dancing oh okay 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 <laughs> oh she tried shortening it a bit then yeah because we don't need any more extra words in these titles so I chose this song because when I first listened to Lust for Life, there were some songs in there that I absolutely loved straight away. And those were the ones like Cherry, In My Feelings, um, White Mustang, like the the ones that most people would say their favourites, Love, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then the songs towards the back end of the album were quite political or serious mm. in a lot of ways. And uh, she had lots of features such as Stevie Nicks on one and then... John Lennon's son. Oh, yeah. I've got his name. Yeah. And I, I didn't really like them that much. I didn't, mm. like, feel them, like, massively. However, um, I listened to that album again the other day, and some of those songs are really fantastic. And with When the World Was At War, war we kept dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to call it When the World Was At War. Yeah. Um, it actually was emotional especially because i have become more political mm. as i age and mm. as the world gets <laughs> descends more crazy, into yeah. more and more <laughs> shite yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was a really hopeful song and it was underrated not just because i underrated it but i think a lot of pro- people probably felt like i did and the streaming wise it wasn't as popular mm. on that album yeah but now I absolutely love it because I find it to be extremely hopeful, sweet, beautiful, freeing mm. and emotional, very yeah. emotional. And it's nice to see that hope from Lana. Too. Yeah, she's usually extremely cynical. So actually with this one, actually paints quite much, a much more optimistic view of the future than yeah. any of her songs. <laughs> actually, Absolutely. It's like <laughs> shocking. Yeah. Shall we have a little listen? Yes.
so beautiful. Yeah, and the so, way it builds and builds. Yeah, you almost like it's like you think the chorus has happened yes. like three times before you actually get <laughs> to the main hook. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. So I love how it starts off with this sort of like the lyrically, it's very like old. You're going back in time mm. with all these girls and their horses going across the pond to America. Girls, don't forget your pearls and all of your horses as you make your way across the pond. They're escaping to a new land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, oh, I hadn't and, thought about that. Yeah, amazing. Mm, going across a pond, literally from the UK to yeah, America. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, because there was going to be hopes and dreams of America, you of know. Of course. <gasps> yeah. I know. Oh my god, I just got chills. The, <laughs> oh my god, the, the American dream and where it all went wrong. Uh, yes. Okay, sorry, yep, yeah, carry on. <laughs> so it's like she says all that bit, like, come on, what are we gonna do? And then in brackets, said by the frightened. Yeah. Throw your hands up and get loose, cut a rug, lean into the fucking youth choreo. We just want the fucking truth. Yeah, so I can almost imagine like a protest of people being like, you know, come on, like, what we're we doing? Like, because we're all fucking scared. Yeah. We are all scared. And then it says, is this the amen- end of America? Is it? Yeah. And then it goes into, no, it's only the beginning. Yeah. And it's like, God, you do sound like Lana. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I can hear it now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I suppose if I'm singing one of her songs, especially. Yeah, do, do well. it, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I always do that. If I'm singing someone else's song, I turn into their voice by accident. I can't help it. It's great, I'm a chameleon. Though. It's so good. You should, maybe you should do a, um, a, 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 tribute. a tribute act. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When the war was at, world was at war before, we all just kept dancing. And it's like, it takes you back to World War and all the different dances then, like the foxtrot, the tango, like these different dances that they were doing while the war was happening in like secret. Very like Lindy Hop, very like, you know, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, we kept dancing. The development of these dance styles all happened around World War II, didn't they? Exactly. And it's like, so we need to keep dancing because we need hope and like we need to still keep joy even though everything around us is terrible. Yeah. We need to keep that joy and hope to bring light again. Yeah. The other, the other connection I made to the dancing in the war was also like the connection to the Vietnam War. Mm-hmm. And actually like the like the protesting in the Vietnam War was like such a big part of it because suddenly like the images from war were suddenly broadcast on television like they'd never been before because the previous wow. world wars, there weren't any television. And yeah. so like there was this feeling of protest, but at the same time you have like Woodstock and you have mm-hmm. the development of like this culture of like hippie culture, which she really plays into in the imagery of Lust for Life, you know, and it, she really positions it almost like within that time. And and that's and that's another era of dancing and kind of party culture and stuff that kind of came out of a response oh, yeah. to difficult times. And then that also then made me think of um, the 2008 recession and how um, we had the development of EDM, electronic dance music, which took over the world in response to the depression, the, re- wow. the, the recession of 2008 after the housing crisis and everything. Like, because that's when Lady Gaga comes out. It's 2009, the year after we have this huge yes. crash. And it's all about escapism. It's all about dancing, going to the club, because you can't, you don't have anything, you can't control what's going on in the world. And so uh, the way, only way that we can cope and continue going forward with hope is to dance and to let it all out through music. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's so cool. So yeah, she really is holding in on like so many eras of war and, you know, depressions and recessions and darknesses, mm-hmm. you know, of yeah. our society. Yeah. Um, and I, I love how the song does grow and grow and like it's different moods for each section so it really is like following a character as well. Yeah, it feels like it's following somebody's thought process mm-hmm. as you're like going through the song mm. because the moments of like almost like hopelessness and desperation are really coloured within the song. And like the, in the end of America, it feels kind of drunk and hazy. Yeah. But then when she cuts through, you can hear the hope in the sound of the song. You can hear the hope in her voice when she kind of actually says no 
yeah we have a solution to this and it rises yeah. in the music as well like and it really is yeah. end of america no it's only and it really pulls you yeah. up like lifts you up yeah And hope always does feel like a higher sort of energy anyway. Yeah. You know, so it really... And it's so, again, again, I've got to say it, Lana having that hope Mm. is magical because she, like we talked about, she is usually quite cynical. She really loves America. We know that. (laughs) But, (laughs) (laughs) you know, we could say the same for the UK. We live in the UK. It's not... They're quite mirrored, these two countries. Mm, You know what I mean? And right now I feel this song... For, the, for our own country right now, just like, come on, we've got to get through this. Keep pushing you through. Know? I yeah, know, yeah. Because it's yeah. been devastating at the moment, everything going on. Yeah. So when I talk about the, the shit that's still going on, I'm referring to the extremely fucking awful racism. Oh, of course. Of yeah. everyone, you know, after those three little girls passed yeah. away. Yeah. And all the riots and stuff yeah. like that. That oh, was hard. Terrifying. Very hard. And wow. <laughs> you know, know that got me quite that revealing me. really revealing mm-hmm. oh, as to totally. like like people like there are still people in this country who will take any excuse to rage against like in this case it was against like people who practiced um islam practice yeah. islam based on completely un like completely r- like lies complete lies like they <laughs> were know. raging a bit, like and it was it wasn't like there wasn't a, like a muslim person who actually um, attacked these girls. No. It was uh, like it was a, a guy teenager. who was born in Cardiff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like the Welsh. I mean, come on. Right. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I am Welsh. Um, the- <laughs> I've got Welsh as well. Yeah. <laughs> I've got Welsh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like it's um, it's it really w- it is revealing that there is still so much in this country. I love how this has sparked a big political chat, but. <laughs> Yeah, p- people came in to listen about Lana Del Rey and we're <laughs> talking about fucking UK politics. Um, but it is political, but this is, But this is the thing, This and, and this is the kind of thing that Lana kind of inspires in people, yes. is is this, this uh, it's almost like a self-reflection. You listen to like what's going on with her and her, like, and you start thinking about like the ways in which you cope, like us personally have like, you yeah. know, individually have coped with difficult situations. Yeah, and I would love to say that, uh, you know, with all this stuff going on, finding joy and through dancing or whatever ha- is so important when yeah. you do feel like the world is at war or yeah. bad things are happening. Yeah. Like we've been saying, you you do want to have that release like you were also saying, you know, and I'm feeling it recently myself with everything yeah. that's uh, happened, even with the whole everything else on the other yeah. side of the world too. Yeah. Oh, God, <laughs> yeah. we, we could yeah. keep going, obviously. Exactly, um, but we can... <laughs> We can, we can save it for another for day. day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, there's a friend of a friend of mine. I'm not going to get into it too much, but she's mm-hmm. um, quite emotionally affected by what's going on in Gaza. Yeah. And she's really struggled to deal. Like, because, I think partly it's because Instagram feeds you all this information all the time and the BBC oh, yeah. News app feeds you all this information oh, yeah. all the time. It's inescapable. But like, oh, yeah. sometimes I just want to say to her, it's like, you need to switch off. You need to yeah. maybe go and cut a rug. Um, and go, yeah. go, go out. Do you know what I mean? Like, Lean into the fucking youth. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, like use these co- coping mechanisms because like, if you don't, like it's so easy nowadays to just get completely pulled down by all of 100%. the negative news around us all the time. Music like this is great because it is like, sometimes we can't do anything but hope. Yeah. Yeah. And it allows us an avenue to, kind of feel these feelings without just getting them all pent up inside yeah. ourselves. Like if you listen to a song like of someone else going through the same thing, it's like a problem shared, a problem halved type oh, thing. Oh, you know? 100%. And if yeah. the weight of the world is getting you down and you listen to a, to an album where someone else is like really struggling with the weight of the world, it just makes it that much better. I also wanted to add, like, I feel like uh, some pop singers, I wouldn't even call Lana like a pop singer, but you know what I mean? Like they don't want to get political. No. But she did in this album altogether and in this song, she got political and it actually made me feel closer to her. Yeah, totally. She's sending a message. Yeah. Yeah. The context, right? Um, so this album came out, was it 2017? And I yeah. remember in the comments for my reaction video, um, a lot of people were saying um, that the political stuff is in response to Trump getting elected. It was. And so... Th- 
with that kind of context, this song really just like fell right into place for me. I was like, Absolutely. oh wow, she's she's seeing what's going on with the with the rise of of this right wing maniac into government and like what that says about her country like what mm-hmm. like the the fact that Trump could get in in the first place and the fact that he's standing for re-election now even though he's a convicted felon must give it's at, like to mine it is <laughs> Yeah, it's loose bits. You have to laugh because otherwise you cry. You have to laugh exactly. and dance, otherwise you'll cry. <laughs> right. Um, right. Yeah, but like, can you imagine like as, like we think it's madness over here, but can you imagine as an American just feeling <laughs> like so totally hopeless that like there's this huge, huge, more than half, I guess, what, whatever, proportional representation, whatever, um, isn't a thing in America. Anyway, the <laughs> enough people <laughs> support Trump and voted for Trump to actually get yeah. him in the first place. And yeah. enough people, are, like, are, like the hopelessness that you must feel knowing that these people exist in your country and yeah. like feeling like you're hopeless to kind of fight against it. But that even makes it even more powerful that she chooses not to just wallow in hopelessness. Absolutely. And, and and another song on the album, I'm not going to go into it really deep either, but mm. it's um, God Bless America and, and she has an older beautiful women in it. And a lot of it is about how women, it would be nice for women to be able to walk down the streets at night and not feel terrified. She's mm. really standing up for everything. And you've got to think about how misogynistic Trump is. Oh. God, yeah. So you know why she wrote that too in, yeah. in regards to America and so her, her head protest. is right there, you know. Yeah. Oh, and I love that she did that. She really, yeah. it shows her altruism and it shows her like, you know, her her heart. Mm. Yeah. She cares about uh, people outside of herself. It's so much political debate. It's just people saying like, oh, I don't want Labour in because like, I don't want them to tax me and I earn a lot of money. Ugh. And it's like, obviously we we have our own, we're always going to have our own things at heart. It's very naturally yeah. human. But like, I feel like we should all take a moment to take a step back and just think about the bigger picture. Absolutely. As voters. And I feel like that's definitely something that she's showing us through this is that she's not this close-minded, like conservative rich woman who's just going to vote for something that's going to benefit her. She is genuinely thinking about other women and she's thinking about like society at at large and what is best for society at large, using her own storytelling to like kind of convey that to young people as well. You know, because that's the other thing is that like there are a lot of young people who are into Lana Del Rey. And if they're listening to a song like When the World Was at War, we just kept dancing. It actually teaches them not only coping mechanisms to deal with like difficult political situations, but also teaches them how to think as a political adult, you know. Yeah. But this is the thing is that like she's, she's a, like a wormhole. Like you, once you start digging in and putting back layers, there's just so much you could you could have picked a thousand underrated songs from her probably <laughs> yeah 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 and uh, because that this is kind of her as an artist is like yes. maybe on surface level people have a certain idea have a certain kind of like oh she's a bit slow or she's a bit boring whatever but as soon as you start peeling back layers there's so so much and she's like almost yeah like the perfect person to talk about she is she's podcast, an enigma you know? yeah i love this song it is yeah. so wonderful and i only recently started loving it you know because i mm. listened to it again i was like oh i feel this now i'm a bit older yeah as well yeah mm-hmm. and i think i think now i know a bit more of the context of the album as well that helps it was jarring for me too very much a transitional record though isn't it mm-hmm. and that's you can hear these in every artist's discography and it's almost like the whole album Lust for Life really paved the way for yeah. NFR to then oh, come yeah. through and do all of these things, but kind of like in a very, very cohesive album. Oh, way, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know? Definitely. Yeah. Cause that the one thing that Lust for Life is not is I would have to say cohesive. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and I don't mind that, but it is like a sort of jumble sale of things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's lots of different ideas and like some of them hit and some of them don't. Uh if you think about like Taylor Swift, this this is the one I always think about when it comes to transitional records. Think about red. Half the songs are like um, still in her kind of rock pop singer songwriter yeah. kind of era that she kind of continued from Speak Now. But then half the songs are Max Martin pop bangers, which I is know. obviously where she then went with the next song. And so I always see Red as this like perfect little imperfect transitional album with some of the best songs in her career, but with like little cohesion. Yes. <laughs> if you are listening to this podcast and you haven't listened to much of Lana Del Rey, I think NFR is actually... I mean, Born to Die is a good place to start and then NFR is a good place to continue, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it really shows like the two sort of different vibes as well Mm -hmm. of her. Yeah, if you don't have time to get it, to listen to every single album in order, then I think those are probably the two two must-listens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I was going to talk about some of the sounds of the song. I really loved like the way in which the acoustic guitar is quite surprising and really connects it to like country music, folk music. Yeah, and I, absolutely that. Absolutely yeah. that. And of course, like again, I'm saying like folk music is a lot of it's political. And then, like, you start off with that acoustic guitar. It's like, okay, we're ready for a folky one now. Yeah, exactly. It's like she's at Woodstock playing it. Yes, like yes. you know, like she, like you could, you could put this song apart, apart from some of the more modern um, production flourishes. This song, you could imagine it being sung at Woodstock in protest of the Vietnam War. Yeah, I think my timing, my years might be mixed up, but I think it was at the same time because I think Woodstock was 1969. I think you're right there. Yeah. And so, you know, like you could really, it feels like you could literally just copy and paste the song into that era and it would yeah. have exactly the same amount of relevance. Oh, absolutely. Oh yeah, there was one other thing about this song that I feel like I have to mention, which is a tiny little production quirk that I noticed that, you know what I'm like, I notice these things and I'm like, oh, I love that. No, um, I love hearing <laughs> so at the beginning, um, let me just play you the beginning again. I think it's a string, like a, something like this, or like maybe like up the string or something um, with a load of production on it. To me, it sounds like a siren. Mm, yeah. You know, like a blitz. Era, yeah. siren where it's like Wah! and it's like that kind of like that connection to that sound is so visceral I feel like that was done on purpose because it takes you into that kind of there's a war going on feeling absolutely it also has like a, a sense of emptiness too like the whole bit like it's very like so you can imagine like cold streets like with no people in and just a siren going yeah, off totally. you know as everyone's indoors afraid hiding yeah. everyone's afraid Yes. Really visceral. I just, yeah, I, that was just the little thing I just had to had to say because, like, that's clearly such amazing, like, sonic table setting for yeah. what the song is going to be. I was born in 1992 and it's, like, 50 years after World War II and yet still that siren is so specific and, like, takes you there immediately. And it's such a clever, like, way of using sound design. Oh, so clever. It really does, for me, feel very cold, yeah. the song. Yeah. It's got a very cold, desolate feeling. And so, like like I already said, with the siren feeling like the empty streets and like that. Mm. But then you've got the guitar that feels quite intimate. Yeah, yeah, and you yeah. can imagine just like a small like group of people like almost in secret playing the guitar. And as the story is being told, like we're going to hold on to hope. You know, it's like the resistance, isn't yes. it? Like they're, it's like, it's like they're in an inn exactly and they're having like that. a secret meeting behind yes. a fireplace or something. Yes. And someone's playing the guitar. And That's exactly like, how I see to, it. We've got to keep dancing. We've got to keep hope. Yeah. You know, oh, it's so good. And of course, when the lyrics do come in and she's saying all these girls with their pearls, I do see that sort of like, the old fashioned sort yeah. of escape to this beautiful place, but it's almost like the story's being told yeah. with the guitar of like, <sighs> this is how it started and oh. this is where it, you know, and then yeah. like the bit where it does get with the attitude, lean into the fucking youth. It's like almost like the group like singing it, yeah. you know, Let's and it like bring everybody together. Yeah. 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 Oh God, I love that. What a visceral image that you can yes. take from that. And it's like, and it's just so, magical that she like can like create these stories just within the sound of the song and just within specific words that she uses and stuff mm -hmm. it's just like oh it's so magical and yeah like and like i just think it's so clever how it all plays into this like war storyline and the and, yeah. the and the resistance against the war and all this kind of stuff like it's just like yeah genius beautiful oh my god so good i love this so much i um, knew we'd have a lot to say about this one <laughs> how would yeah. there not be oh, you know my god. i know <laughs> We've done 40 minutes talking about this one song. <laughs> I think we spent 20 on the first song. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, and I've got even more notes for the next song. Wow. So shall we, get, shall we get on? <laughs> Let's do it. Be Let's do it. <laughs> okay, so fun. I wouldn't even mind if we were, you know. Yeah, to be fair. To be fair. <laughs> but not for your editing. That would not be fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Fern, would you like to introduce your final underrated song, please? Okay, last but not least, I have chosen This Is What Makes Us Girls. And the reason I've chosen it is because I think it's a pretty underrated song. 
on the album. I think when I was looking it up, it was like not as many streams as some as, as some of them. Yeah. yeah, it's at the end of the album too. It's Born to Die, right? The yeah, Born album. to Die, Born to yeah. Die, and um. This song is just very, very special to me because it's extremely relatable over many experiences of my life. Mm. So being a girl helps, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and also having a bit of a rough time growing up and mm. also growing up too young. Mm. And also just, it's so perfectly and sadly true. A lot of women are, you know, whether you're straight or bisexual, pansexual, I'm pansexual, but, you know, we are conditioned to fall in love with a man, have babies, stick to a straight and narrow, be a good girl. Mm. And in this song, we'll hear it. I don't know how to, how, how would I say it? Like, for me, it was like the story of someone trying to rebel against that, but ultimately yeah. falling back into this kind of patriarchal system yeah. through no fault of her own. Yeah. Whereas the last song had a lot of hope. This one has no hope. It's like you will fall back into this system and you cannot control it. I would say as someone who is nearly 30 um, and relates to Lana in a, in a lot of ways, this is kind of a cyclical experience mm. that you can go through in one lifetime, not just mm. as a teenager. Women in general will constantly go through things where you can lose friendships because of love, yeah. <laughs> I suppose. Trying yeah. to fo follow love. Yeah. It's because it's very personal to me at the moment. It's hard to explain it in a broad way. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Should we have a little listen? Yeah. me emotional every time I hear it. The, so the start of the song is like so real to me, like the whole like wanting a taste of real life, trying to be grown before you're grown and like mm. meeting up with the boys, they'll whistle hi hi and it's all very like they're sneaking to the swimming pool, let's go and do like naughty yeah. rebellious things, especially me who was had very overprotective parents. Remember how we used to party up all night Sneaking out looking for a taste of real life Drinking in a small town fire love. I would literally walk from my town to another town where my friend lived just to ring my parents from their house phone and then go back out again. And it was like a 45 minute walk each way. And so like I was grown before I was grown, all these things. Like, so at first you're thinking like, oh my God, yeah, like this girl's like, this is what makes us girls very like rebellious, cheeky, sticking together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then in a chorus, it's very much like, this is what makes us girls, we don't stick together because we put love first. Yeah. I have recently, and I don't mind saying this, mm. I've recently made a new friend. It says in the pre-chorus, I met a new friend. Yeah, yeah, right? it does, yeah. And I have recently met a new friend in May. She's like a mirror of me. She's extremely like me, and I love her to pieces. She's amazing. Yeah. However love with a not so nice person has got in the way yeah. and it's not because we love the same person or anything like that she loves someone that i don't like yeah and it's hard because i'm on a different level now you know mm. like i can't you don't have time to waste no, on, no. on on these because it will invite yeah. more darkness into my life when i want to yeah. find someone i'm not doing it yeah exactly you know? yeah but I, we stood there in the rain a couple of weeks ago, mm. in the rain, two in the morning, under one umbrella, crying. She's mm. going, I hate men. And yeah. like, this song is just like saying, Lana, how I hate those guys. Yeah. And it's like the tears run down her eyes. We were both crying. Yeah. And it was like one of those moments. And I, this song that I already loved and related to from my teenage years just hit me like a freaking train yeah. again. I 
as of someone who's nearly 30, it's still happening to women, yeah. not just girls, you know? Yeah. And it is so sad. Yeah. But that's why this song is so powerful because it's so real, very real. To be able to draw those comparisons so specifically is quite like magical kind of. So specific because it's real for her. Yeah. It's specific because it's her true experience. Yeah. In this song, when I was really going, getting into the lyrics, mm. like I was writing notes and I just kept writing and writing and writing and writing because I just felt like there was just so much true, real depth that she's like talking about within this song that is like a symptom of our society. Yeah. Like a story told in, in, in a kind of like very specific, like kind of this is what's happening way, but that has like such a kind of like, big societal kind of broad association, you know? A hundred percent. Yeah. She is telling her a specific life story. And I, I imagine it's quite cathartic for herself to then release that and have so many people relate to it too, because yeah. it really felt like she was telling her story and she's just really getting every little detail in there as well. Because you know how she often leaves a lot to imagination? Yeah. I feel like this one is just telling you. Yeah, it's like yeah, she yeah. needed to get all of this I out. to get this one out. And... I, I know I relate to it mm. and yeah, it is very, you know, at the end of the song where she said they were the only friends I ever had, you know, yeah. now I'm on a train platform yeah. crying because I know I'm never coming back. And it's, it's like, she's got things. sent away. She literally did get sent away. Yeah. They were the only friends I ever had. We got into trouble and when stuff got bad, I got sent away. I was waving on the train platform, crying because I know I'm Yeah, it's such a brilliant story. Like, I really love, like, the way that it starts out, like, um, you know, like, oh, we're out, you know, we're going out with 16 and we're drinking our Pabst Blue Ribbon beer and, <laughs> and, and the people are, like, and but already within that storyline, it's all very, like, kind of innocent at the beginning, but there's already people wolf-whistling, these 16-year-old yes. girls. And that, I... that, that's very specific, right? Throughout this song, there are moments of men controlling women Absolutely. or men, like putting themselves on women and like evidence of the kind of patriarchal kind of unjust situation that we find ourselves in. I was getting wolf whistled by the time I was 12. Fucking hell. That's You'd just be walking along awful. the bridge and it, it was honking of the cars, wolf whistles. And we don't, we as a teenage girl or even under teenage you don't know it's wrong, so you think it's flattering mm. at the time. Yeah. Especially if you've probably grown up being sexualized anyway, yeah. you know. Um, but it it's so when she said that, it's just so real. Yeah. yeah. Like, but yeah. you're there like the girls, and she's not saying it like, you know, they whistle as we say hi, hi, and it's all like yeah, it's not like, oh. it's not in a horrible way she's saying it, even yeah. though it's horrible. Yeah, but, but she's she's coming from a perspective. As an adult, she's reflecting on that situation from when she was 16. Yes. She's thinking, we loved that. But now yes. I look back and I realise that's a symptom absolutely, of, of, absolutely. Of, of the patriarchy, you know, and the way in which, like, women are conditioned to prioritise men over their mm -hmm. female friendships. Mm -hmm. And, like, when you take a step back and actually look at that with perspective, it's like your friendships are, are actually could be the ones, the people that support you your whole life. Yes. Like romances come and go. A hundred percent. And maybe at one point you will find someone to be with, with the rest of your life. But when that all goes wrong, your female friends are the ones who are going to be there to pick you up. And yet women are conditioned to, yeah, for these friendships to break down over men. Yeah. And the thing is, that's exactly why I told my friend at this age, my, yeah. my new friend, I told her, do it. Whatever you're doing, do it till you can't. I'm here. Yeah. Like, I'm, I might not want to be around yeah. you guys. I'm drawing my own boundaries. Yeah, but I'm here. But yeah. If anything yeah. happens. Let's break the cycle. Because I want to be her friend for life. Because yeah. she is so much more than what this is. Yeah. The weirdest thing is, I liked this guy before I even knew her. Yeah, it's just very powerful for me at the moment. Because I was shown that my gut instinct from the start, why I never pursued it with him in the first place, was was some growth that I didn't know about. Mm. But it, there was the growth was that I'm not going for someone like that again without knowing what he was really like, but I had a feeling. Yeah. And yeah. I had to go through many horrible experiences before that. Before. Yeah. 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 Oh, God. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, I think I've, I've reached a similar thing with my boyfriend where it's like, 
like he's kind of the first nice guy that I actually yeah. went for, you know. And it's like, oh look, it's worked. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that. exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. But I mean, it's easy to see with perspective, but when you're in the moment, it's like you just get caught up in in yeah. the kind of power of it. I love her more than I could have ever loved him, and yeah. like that is what. This, so this song, like when, what you were saying, like we need to keep those female friendships because they're the ones that will keep be there forever. Romances come and go. And I know that. I know yeah. that now, but I might yeah. not have a few years ago. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Sorry, I, I obviously just need to vent as well. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> it's still, and the song is just like, yeah, it's it connects exactly all those dots, it. doesn't it? It really <laughs> does. Yeah. I mean, I think we've really talked about all the stuff that I'd actually kind of come up for like i said this song acts as an allegory for patriarchal systems that force female friendships apart first by trying to convince them that true love is more important than anything Mm -hmm. and then by forcible removal in the storyline where she gets sent off on a train probably by her father yeah yeah crazy and it's like it's just like it's just so clever how she like pins together this narrative that has such a sad undercurrent that really is reflective of an entire system and all women. And the saddest thing as well with this song is that like these young girls, like her especially, I can guarantee you for being who she was, she would have been called a slut yeah, for sure. 100%. We're all just looking for love. Yeah. And we're not the slut in this situation. And I know it's a very much UK culture, a lot of teenage girls would be going for older boys, mm-hmm. men, yeah, actually. And you don't know that's wrong until you get to that age. Yeah. And then, and, it, like, and then you think about it and you're like, oh my God. Like, yeah. Yeah. And it's so coercive. It's so love bomby. It's so. Oh, manipulative. Like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I know. We're, we're not a slut because, like, there's a power dynamic there. We're know? looking to be wanted to yeah. actually find our Prince Charming because we're taught to do that for such a fucking young age. Right. We're constantly trying to look for that at the age of fucking 14. Like, you want to find true love. Actually, what these young girls should be doing is what Lana's doing in the song. Going mad. Yeah. Having crazy nights out. Having loads of fun. Breaking into the, the you know... A, 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 okay, maybe don't go quite that far. But do you know what I mean? Like, well... <laughs> I did say the song was relatable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this but is like, <laughs> but like, young girls should be able to push the boundaries and ex- like experience the kind of crazy craziness that life has to offer. Obviously, be safe, but like, they should be allowed that freedom to do that. Yeah. And Lana in the song is not well. She does it, and then she's reprimanded for that because she's sent off yeah. on the train. And it's like a you know a tale as old as time where like young girls will get reprimanded by being called a slut, by being called, you know, whatever. From your own family too. Yeah. Whereas like, whereas young men will not, they'll be like, oh, look, you're like such a stud. Like, yeah. you know, you're going around sleeping with loads of people. He's young. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, it's so sad. I could go on about this for ages passionately just because obviously I feel it like as yeah. a woman in general, I fucking know. Like, and as yeah. a woman who like I said, relates to Lana in a lot of ways and, you know, didn't have the best upbringing and, you know, had to grow up fast, actually. Mm. And, you know, I was pregnant at 16. Well, yeah. And, like, I'm glad I'm a mum now. But a lot of that decision was also because of the patriarchy. Yeah. And I won't go too far into it, but it was. Yeah, yeah. And... There There was stuff outside of your control. Yeah. yeah, but I'm happy, obviously, to be a mum. Yeah, Actually, I, I couldn't imagine not being one. Uh, yeah. But still, yeah. 16 and pregnant, it's not the way to go. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the amazing thing about music, and you know, specifically with Lana, but in general as well, is that, like, it gives us a way to piece through, like, really difficult, kind of sometimes traumatic experiences. Yeah. Um, because in analysing the lyrics and in understanding someone else's experience of it, you it then reflects on yourself and yeah. helps you to understand, oh, actually, there there are patriarchal things outside of my control that led me to to, oh, to this yeah. place, you know? And suddenly you start forgiving yourself for, for, for those mistakes or forgive or like, you know, allowing yourself to kind of let go of trauma, you know, yeah. because you can kind of understand 
um, more context and you can understand this. And actually it's the same thing, like a problem shared is a problem half. And if yeah, you're sharing really that is. problem with Lana and Lana's gone through it on the opposite side yes. of the world in a completely different situation yeah. and yet you have that connection, it really is healing. And, and she does it in such yeah. an authentic, vulnerable way too that makes mm-hmm. you want to break down a little bit and be vulnerable yourself. Uh, the reason I broke into a simple is because a 25 man year old man did when I was 15. You know what I mean? There so you go. Yeah. it wasn't even me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all men's fault. <laughs> yeah. He even boosted me over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crazy. But yeah. Yeah, I know. I could go on and on about that one just because it does relate too much to like the whole feminine so closely, side. Even yeah. that, like, you know. It's freaky. Like, it's, yeah, freaky. it's freaky. Yeah. I don't know. How do you like scares me? The only thing that didn't happen is I didn't get sent away anywhere. Yeah. I just got yeah. pregnant instead. <laughs> <laughs> imprisoned instead so, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only oh, there was a lyric that that i found that was quite specifically quite sad don't worry about it it's all gonna happen And on the surface, it almost feels like, oh, you're comforting a friend saying, like, don't worry about this guy. It will happen eventually. You'll find your guy eventually. But to me, or like with the context of the song being like quite anti-patriarchy, I really was starting to kind of see that as like, you don't have the choice. You yeah. are going to Ooh. get trapped in a monogamous relationship, whether you like it or not. Yeah. That was kind of how yeah. I read that line. It's also like, absolutely. And it's also like saying, you know, don't cry about him because this is going to happen all over again. Yeah. It's all going to happen again. Don't cry about him. It's all going to happen for us. We're not even adults yet, but it's going to be fine. It's also the hopefulness of that too. There's so many different ways you can read every single line. And that is really like what Lana is so good good at is that like she purposely builds in poetic moments that could be read in multiple different ways. And there's sometimes very strict double entendres. Like what's the cinnamon? Isn't there a double entendre in that one? Yeah, sweet like cinnamon. Yeah. Like a yeah, fucking like a dream I'm in... living in. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It's yes. like there's built in double entendres into everything she's saying. Like sweet and bitter, you know. Yeah. Like she really yeah. like plays with, with those op- opposite things in all of her poetry. Um, and yeah, like, like that's another line that really could be read in like two completely different ways. But like the way in which it can be read in two different ways really gives it even more emotional depth because it's almost like this realisation that like what she's saying has an extra level of meaning yeah. when you look at yeah. the kind of broader societal thing. The thing that really reframed Lana uh, like a little bit for me digging into this for preparation for this episode um, was that like a lot of people um, because of the imagery and because of the way that Lana talks about like power within relationships, a lot of people talk about Lana as if she's very conservative mm. and very kind of like she likes traditional feminine role in the household and stuff. And after digging into this song, I really started to realise there's a kind of like perspective thing going on here where she's like almost like inhabiting this typical housewife, like traditional woman, but then spelling out all of the darkness and the horribleness that comes from doing that. And so actually in her kind of character work, as it were, and what happens to these women who get trapped into into these like abusive relationships and stuff. For me, she's showing how much of a feminist she is, you know, because she's like really picking apart the reasons why and undermining this kind of traditional female narrative, you know, as going as far back as video games, you know. And she is not telling us, you you know, it's not fucking woman's world by Katy Perry. Oh, we can wait for you to come to the game today. <laughs> you know what I mean, though? Like, it's not, it's yeah. not saying you could be strong, you could do this. She's saying, I'm just telling you what it is, actually. I'm not going to tell you yeah. what to do. I'm just telling you the real side of it. Think of um, Ultra Violence, the song. She, uh, she uses a lyric from an old song. Um, he hit me and it felt like a kiss, right? Yeah. Some people found that to be like disgusting and romanticizing domestic, you know, abuse. Mm. It's like, no, it's just a very fucking real feeling that people go through when you get hit and then they and then they love bomb you again and pull you back in. And you know that every time you're going to get hit, you're going to be treated real nice after. Yeah. That's what it means. It's not romanticizing it. Yeah, it's, no, exactly. It's, it's authenticating it. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. And that's the thing that so much of internet culture is scared of doing is actually yeah. like, they're like, oh, you shouldn't be 
like reacting this. You shouldn't be talking about this because it's like a bad thing. And it's like, actually, we should be talking about it. We should be talking about it about it in a negative light so that we yes. can dissect what is going on and find a way of like moving on from it and find a way yes. of healing from it. You yeah, know? so let's at least fucking acknowledge it. Exactly, because yeah. if you don't acknowledge it, then we're just going to repeat the the, the same mistakes of the past. Yeah. And we're just going to end up in these endless cycles. She's like, there's no point in me standing here and telling you the patriarchy's bad. Let me write all these songs from the perspective of like a woman who's been <laughs> abused. Let me like actually dig into these things on a finite level by actually mm. positioning myself within these storylines and explaining to you why they're bad. Because you'll have empathy for the, for, 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 yeah. for her yeah. within, within our songs, you know? Oh, just love her. Fucking stunning. Like, she's, like, unlike any other. And I feel like, although she's a huge artist, I feel like, in a mainstream way, though, I reckon if anyone's listening who doesn't really know Lana, I really beg you to kind of, like, take take an hour with her, take a couple of hours with her where you actually really sit and listen and understand and you will start finding all these little details oh, and start yeah. peeling away these layers and really start to discover an artist who is unlike anybody else. Getting into Lana actually made me really able to accept myself as a woman and as a person in this world, someone that isn't uh, perfect and someone that, because none of us are perfect. Like I said at the very start of this podcast too, how I was honest Lady Gaga and she taught me how to express myself in an artistic, creative way and yeah. strong. Lana yeah. allowed me just to be myself. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Should I, I just end the podcast there? <laughs> yeah. No boom. end section, boom. <laughs> Cut to black. <laughs> it would kind of make sense for this whole podcast. <laughs> Fucking beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Well said. Right. Should we go on to the final section of this oh, episode? Oh, yeah. I forgot so, about this bit, actually. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> We've been chatting for so long <laughs> that we forgot. It has been so lovely talking to you, though. Oh, it's been an absolute dream. I've, that, I've, honestly, it's been beautiful. And thank you so much for sharing so much of yourself on this episode. Oh. Um, oh. But we have one more job to do before we finish. We have to decide between us which of these songs is criminally underrated and belongs on the top tier playlist. If you want to check out the criminally underrated playlist, it is available on Spotify. It's not on Apple because I'm not paying for Apple. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Fern, do you have any ideas as to which you might want to put in? The thing is, like, I would like to choose This Is What Makes Us Girls because of how much it means to me. However, I, I wouldn't say it is the most underrated. Mm. Um, it is on, it's on Born to Die, which is obviously the biggest album exactly um the uh, the most commercially successful album that she's yeah. done so and then we've got burning desire which is underrated but you can understand why because it is a bonus on a this or that you know yeah. what i mean yeah so i'm actually gonna have to go with when the world is at all you know funny you should say that because that's what i was gonna say as well <laughs> oh that's what gosh. i was gonna say i thought i i thought you were gonna go for this one makes us girls because yeah. of that personal connection yeah, yeah. But, but i no, was trying to be logical here yeah i think i think if we were to be uh, like like take a step back and think about it logically yeah for me like this the when the world was at war we kept dancing just has like such a powerful statement that is just so resonant particularly at the moment with us on a kind of macro level and on a micro level on how we actually deal with these difficult things. And also in terms of the underrated aspect of it, I think that um, Lust for Life, I've underrated that album personally. It's very much, as we said, it's the transitional album. So there are lots of ups and downs and like, and so it doesn't get anywhere near as much kind of streaming or chat. And so I think this song, I guess it gets a little bit lost, but it's such a powerful way of like, talking about the situation that we find ourselves in especially now in 2024 like it's september 2024 we're we're recording this um in america right now trump and um harris are going at it and i'm really hoping that she has the power to like pull it off i mean you never know because you know because there's a lot of idiots out there there's a lot of people (laughs) who will vote without thinking um and uh, so i guess we'll see but either way the way in which we will cope with it is spelled out in this song yeah. and it's in an appreci- it's in like allowing yourself freedom mm-hmm. the freedom to dance and the freedom to move and the freedom to enjoy art and express yourself as a human don't forget that you can like that we have danced before through yeah. these through pain so let's keep doing that 
Yeah. yeah. We made it through, like, his his first period in 2016. Yeah. We made it through Brexit. We made it through COVID. We made yeah. it, do you know what I mean? And yeah. we're still dancing. We're still exactly. dancing now. You know, people dance in their kitchens in COVID. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I was videoing myself dancing and just, like... <laughs> Just being crazy in my living room. Chromatica was like my... And oh, I just stick too. it on and just like literally like dance around the house Same. to that album. And yeah, and then that hope, I think, is is in terms of Lana's discography, then actually sets it apart amongst her other songs because yeah. so much of her songs don't have this like, like kind of powerful message of of hope and resilience um but this song really does it really does i think yeah that that's it then isn't it so yeah. when so what was the bloody title of the song when <laughs> <laughs> what is it when the, when the was world at, was at war when the world was at war i said when the world when the world was at war we kept dancing yeah by lana del rey will be added into the criminally underrated playlist the decision is made. Thank you so much, Fern, for sharing so much of yourself on this episode and really, like, being so open and so, like, yeah, great here chatting with me about Lana. Well, it's been you know, that me. also could be because you're easy to talk to. So <laughs> thank you for allowing me the platform to just <laughs> the soapbox. My absolute pleasure, like, <laughs> totally. But, but, um, yeah. And also just to be able to talk about Lana, someone I very deeply love and care about, and talk about that with you is so fun. So thank you so much for this, and I really hope everyone enjoys this episode. Yeah, I hope everyone enjoys this episode mm. too. Like, let us know what you think about the episode um, over on Instagram, Lucent underscore music. On Spotify, if you click through to the episode, you can actually answer the poll. Which of Fern's picks do you think is criminally underrated? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, whether the general population will think will go with the same or whether they'll go with different songs than than what we ultimately decided on. So make sure to vote in that poll. Yeah, click through to the episode on Spotify and you'll find the poll. And yeah, if you want to watch the video version or the video version is actually the extended video version so you get to see all of the random tangents that we went on, um, then you can do so by going over to the Patreon where you can also get access to all of my uncut reaction videos and bonus reaction videos and and the community of lovely people over there as well. So yeah, make sure to go there and you're supporting me directly. Yay. Absolutely. Go do it, guys. <laughs> Yay. Um, cool. Right. Uh, Fern, do you want to shout out all your bits once again? Yeah. So Fernstone on YouTube. Also, I have a Patreon too, uh, where I do, you know, uncut videos and song request videos. Also, Instagram, Fernstone Artist, and TikTok, Fernstone something. <laughs> I can't remember, but just if you find one of them, the links will be yeah. around. Let's be yeah, honest. they're yeah. always in the description of my YouTube videos, and my YouTube is Fernstone. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, Thanks. cool. Right, thank you so much for jo- joining me, Fern. Bye, everybody. You're waving, but you're not saying bye. Yeah. So- bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> they can't see you. Oh yeah. <laughs>